Well, folks, welcome back to Talk from the Terrace, and I'm joined again by my good friend over in Glasgow, Average Joe Miller. How you doing, Joe? I'm doing well, mate. A week all day celebrating <sighs> a Monday night. I'm on the water, Joe, because uh, I do my drinking now on a Saturday. Sunday is recovery, and then back to work Monday. Uh -huh. Have you been out walking today? I see you got a big red coupon again. Yeah, I actually think I, I think I didn't forgot to put my sun cream on today, Joe. Um, I only had it on, I only had it on my nose. I have it. I have a thing, right? Be, and Irish people get this, right? This is the truth, and it's called Celtic or Celtic acne. And when I went to the doctor, I said, "Look," I says, "Every time I go on my holidays to Spain, my nose is all pimples." And what story? And he says, that's called Celtic acne. He says, you get it from too much drink and too much sun. He says, it's very common right. with Irish people. <laughs> but it's actually, and I said, it's not called Celtic acne. And he goes, it, it is. He says, and he got it open the computer and he printed it off me and he said, there you go. So he sent me off to get prescription cream because, and unlike you, we don't have an NHS and I had to take a small mortgage out to buy the cream. <laughs> after I paid him 55 quid for, for his knowledge. So, yeah. um, and that's a thing, Joe. Before we before we get start talking football, that's a, that's a thing, right? You've had you've had the elections over there now. The SNP seems to be going from strength to strength. The independence uh, is definitely on the agenda for Scotland again. But if you get independence, Joe, do you lose the NHS? Because no, we it, don't. That's all. That's all. You keep keep everything. Yeah, yeah, keep that going. Yeah. Because I, I, I've heard a few whispers that, and that maybe that's a bit of scaremongering, is it, from the, from the Un unionists? Yeah, stay, stay Britain, Britain for uh, There's a lot of scaremongering going about, you know. But see, at the end of the day, if it's a if it's a price in the pocket, and and people can afford, if I could afford, that people can afford, it's, it's a price to pay for independence. You know, it's I wouldn't mind having to pay extra for the NHS. Uh, it's certainly getting ransacked just now by the UK government. It's ridiculous what's going on with it. So uh, I think a lot of people in Scotland totally support. Well, they do support the NHS. They know the job that they're doing. They know they have to pay for it. And it's not free because you pay through your taxes, etc. So it's not free as such. But certainly we'd rather uh, my money... And Scotland's money going to the NHS than a big fucking bomb just up the road for me here. You know, fast lane that they travel through during the night. And most, well, most most times they, they do the warheads and the stuff during the night when nobody's awake and can't see it. Traveling through the city and through areas all the way up there, you know. So we've got nuclear weapons in Scotland as part of the union. I'll fucking park them down in London if they want them. Not, not here. So, anyway, that's a party political broadcast for you. So, I take it, Joe, you got out and voted. Sorry? I take it you got out and voted. Always, I always vote. Um, I don't... I understand some people's arguments saying, uh, oh, it's, it's not worth it. Who's, there's nobody really there that represents me. There's... Um, they're all the same, blah, blah, blah. But you need to vote still. No fucking... Wasn't that long ago women died to get the vote? And I think a lot of people dismiss it a bit. But I always vote, even if it's a local election, general election, whatever. And now, just now, it's for independence. You know, growing up, it was it was Communist Party and they were always standing and Socialist parties and the Socialists uh, are still standing. So there's always something out there you shouldn't... I, a vote is your way of trying to change things, you know. And I get the arguments people have about it, but you should always vote, always. Yeah, I always vote, Joe, uh, over here, and we are um, we don't have we don't have a health service like you have over there. We have uh, a two tier yeah. health system, which you pay your taxes, you still pay to go to see the doctor, or you can have private health care, which is which is defeats the purpose really of paying your taxes. But yeah. there you go, um, Joe. I'm looking at my notes here. The league's over. Thank God. Oh, fuck. How bad was that? Watching that Hibs v Celtic. I was like watching walking football. <laughs> the second half. I was like that. 
I was, back, I was fucking hitting the side of my illegal screen going, is that, is, is that stuttering? Is that actually moving? You know, it was awful. What an awful end to a season. Spineless. It's funny you should mention Marco football. I was watching the father Ted the other day when um, it was the the, the pensioners <laughs> game. <laughs> Just when you said that, I thought of it. That was more entertaining than that nonsense at the weekend. Jeez, it was bad. But again, a couple of good chances. Maybe should have scored. Don't do it, and it just fades away to nothing. Yeah, it was. It's 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 the story of the season. But Joe, we've you know. We, you know, we, it's just <laughs> I can't explain. It's, it, it's, it's annoying, you know, because I know we're laughing at it now, we're getting over it a bit. But deep down, there's still a lot of anger there about how it all came about from from the board going into the, the last few seasons um, since Brendan Rodgers left. Uh, and the kind of downhill we've went since then. And they could have avoided a lot of, a lot of this happening. And the last time I was on your show, uh, we were talking about the upcoming FA, uh, the Scottish Cup game, uh, away to that mob at Ibrox. And I said I didn't want it to be a case of playing quite well, creating chances, and then going, oh, we, we were the better team. But we, we, were, we still had the Scottish Cup to play for, and we never did anything to really go and get it. We, we still had John Kennedy there. Still had played the same players, still playing the same formation, and we were all just to suck it. You know, we next week's the Scottish Cup final here, and fair play to have St. St. Johnston in the final. But we should have been striving for that, and the players and the management and the board didn't seem to bother. So that that is kind of galling again, and it's kind of when when the cup is on next week, I'll be fuming that we are not in it. You know. Yeah, um, and you mentioned Rogers there, like that we haven't, you know, we've gone backwards since since Rogers left, and he he lifts a he lifts a cup down in England, and I, I was looking at a bit the build up to it, Joe, and he was interviewed they were interviewed two Leicester fans, and it was really refreshing because they were asking him, do you want, you know, Champions League football, top four football, or do you want the cup, and they were saying, you know, we want the cup. No, oh, this is mm. what fans go for, and most English teams, like the priority is to stay within that Premier League because that's where the mm. money is. So they don't really care about the cups. Well, it's not that they don't care, but they don't. But yeah, it's the fans that are left behind. You know, like yeah. what fan doesn't want to be in a cup final? Yeah, yeah, they'll sacrifice a cup to stay in the league. You know, and it's uh, it's, it's a shame the way that that tournament down there has went as well. Um, Usually it'd be a big occasion, FA Cup, Scottish Cup, same day. You'd be flicking watching to see who's who's on. I used to get an interest in English football then. I, I couldn't have told you who was in the cup final, uh, the FA Cup, until I, I seen it. Uh, I seen a bit of it on TV. I, I couldn't have told you who the finalists were. And likewise, I can't tell you who's the top two in the league just now. I, I, I would hazard a guess, but. I couldn't even tell you. That's how much interest I take in that league now. It's just, it's, it's dead to me. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, I suppose, and the way football's gone now, we've got a Champions League final with two teams from England who are not the champions, or were not the champions last year of the league. So, and we have UEFA giving out about the Super League when they've just, they've created the Super League. Yeah, I know. I know. It's all, all the all the people kind of moaning about that uh, happening. It's, it's just ridiculous, you know. These are the same people that accept that countries champions can't get straight into the Champions League. You know, they think it's actually gold. You know, be it from Ireland or, or Scotland or any other small nations. You know, we, we're we're treated differently by uh, the powers that be in the Champions League, and it's a joke. You know, it's a trademark should be against their name for calling it Champions League when, especially when the first ever final of two teams that weren't even champions of their league. You know, that that was crazy. Uh, it's a, it's a bit like the Americans calling 
the, their sport the world series when the world doesn't take part in it. Yeah, they don't let the Cubans play in, in the World Series because they're the best at baseball. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, on your way for okay, and, and I'm going to hit on something here from the FA Cup final. So we've got we've got what's going on in Palestine has always been bad, but it's it's really bad now, Joe. And we had we had a couple of the Leicester players, you know, photographed with the flag, and I seen the flag in the crowd, and it was great to see fans back in the stadium watching football. It really was. I know it was it, some was spread out, but all the Leicester fans seemed to be together. Like you know, the COVID, the yeah. COVID restrictions was at the window. They were, they were celebrating that win, and and I did see someone with a Palestinian flag, and obviously it was there to give to the boys, and they went on to the they, they you know it was, they were photographed after the game. Now I don't know if your wife are going to find them, because they certainly find Celtic when. When we displayed Palestinian flags in in the standing section, and then we have we have the club coming out saying that the Green Brigade tried to um, hijack Scott Brown's uh, going away game by putting up Palestinian flags, and it was displayed that he should have left if UEFA was going to fine us. Yeah, okay, we'll pay the fine. Just like why make it? Why make it? You know, an issue out of it that do it like mm-hmm. because all the stuff that was given in for the Scott Brown stuff was was lost in the stadium because of the big corporate banners. There was no area really; mm-hmm. they were just spread everywhere. And unless I'm sure it meant something to Scott Brown, but as a TV spectacle, you couldn't see any display. Yeah, to, to be fair, I didn't notice it to be honest. The Scott Brown stuff, but that's that's the thing with Celtic. Then they come out and. Um, they put out the famine uh, top commemorating the famine. You know, let's get real. It wasn't a famine. The Brits, the Brits had plenty of food. They, they were trying to kill off the Irish. You know, Mass and, genocide. Yeah, of course it was. And, and for it, it still get called the famine, the great famine and all that now. The great famine. Fucking using the word like great with it. It wasn't. There was plenty of food. They just let people starve. You know, you, I seen a list of what they were, uh, was shipped out, and uh, I think it was a cork uh, the same day. One of the mass, uh, one of the biggest uh, days of the the famine when a lot of people died. And I uh, say I'm using famine, but is masses of food was transported out the country. So and then, but uh, that, that kind of gets me about Celtic WA, you know, and uh, uh, all of us, we we, we kind of conditioned to call it the famine. It wasn't. The Brits knew what they were doing. But you know that more than me. You're over there as well. But maybe, maybe you don't know more than me as in... I think people in general just kind of get conditioned into seeing it as the famine and then it's gone the next day. But it should be played in their minds all the time. And it should be remembered properly, not, not with this kind of pussyfooting around uh, what the British government done at the time, you know? Yeah, well, it's in the history books as the famine, but the history books, you know, seem to be, um, they seem to be, they seem to be wrote in, in a way that doesn't offend anyone, you know what I mean? But that's, yeah. that, that, that's the, this, you know, like, this is the history. I know, I know my history and I know that, um, I know Ireland, we've never invaded anywhere, you know, we've been invaded by plenty, you know, we had the Vikings and then we had the Brits, but yeah, it, it it was mass genocide, and I, and I did see someone had, had commented on social media, and I said, yeah, they're calling it right here. But and yeah, and but like all this, you know, you know, Black Lives Matters, the boys taking the knee and everything, and, and very welcome. But there's no one taking the knee for the Palestinians, you know, because it's, it's no. not because there's because the Israeli state is too powerful. You know, well, one one thing they've done is grab the media uh, quickly. Uh, they've done it. They've been doing it for years, but they really do have a, a grip over the media uh, throughout the world, and and that's why they bombed AP and uh, Al Jazeera building just the other day because they know that's where it matters is to get their side across and stop anybody else's. Now, and and as soon as you talk about this subject as well, you. You need to be careful because in the back of your mind, people right away will say you're against the Jewish people and they start pointing fingers and all that. And 
then you're not against Jewish people. You're against the, you're against the Zionist government there. I'm against loads of governments throughout the world. I've been plenty against, against my own government here. It's not against the actual people. It's, it's, a, it's a state run government that's it's doing it. And they control the media so much that we could go. Jeremy Corbyn, for example, he was out protesting in the street against uh, fascism and everything, and he's, he's been absolutely massacred as being uh, uh, anti Jewish. That was one of the major plays they'd done on him and, and backed all over the media here. It's a fucking shame for that man. That, and, and, and hung out by members of his own party as well. Exactly. Well, that's, that's the thing. That's all they kept playing on was as anti Zionism and, and the Labour Party, and you just think, where's that come from? You know, and where is it? You know, but it never really got shown as, there you go, there's the proof. It's just a lot of individuals who spoke out against the Israeli state were, were labelled with this, and, that, and that's the way it is. And it's a, it's a shame because, it is, as I know you, you want to talk about it, because, as I say, I went, I went to see Celtic over there twice, and some of the people are. Well, just like you and I, they're great people. There's a lot of great people there who don't agree with their governments. Yeah, and there is teams over there, Joe, um, that will have left-wing um, fans. Yeah, of course they do. And but but they even even a lot of the left-wing uh, organisations over there are getting clamped down by by their government because it's seen as being too. Oh, being too left and, and, and being pro-Palestinian as well, to get because a lot of the a lot of ones I spoke to and a lot of people I know over there that were saying that they're going, Palestinians have got the right to be here just as much as, as if I, I've got the right to sit here, and, and these people were saying this, and you just think that's not the message that comes across when when it's it's, it's getting so, the it's, they're so right wing the Israelis now, the government and the the, the push for it. Is this so right wing? It's and it's kind of hard to get your head going. How can that? How can they be right wing? Because everything they associate with right wing is fascism, the Nazis, all the rest. And you just think, how can they go that way? But that's the way they're going. They're going. They're totally right wing. And you, 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 as you mentioned, you've been there twice. But the last time you were there, Joe, um, that was the Bear Shave game. Yeah. And you, you went into, you went into the, into Palestine. Yeah, yeah. Um, just first of all, a lot of people said to us, uh, "Why are you going? Why are you going there? And why would you ever visit that state?" Blah blah blah. And I says, "Well, I've been. I, I go to Ireland quite a lot, and I go to occupied six counties quite a lot. So, uh, and I, I've said to some of them, well, you even go over to the occupied six. So why would you not boycott that state? You know." But it was a Celtic game, and plus we were going down to the camps as well. So it was. I wanted to educate myself and see it. Uh, you know, you can only get these chances every so often. So anyway, you, we, we went to the game and it was straight after the, obviously the home game and we had the fine and all the Palestinian flags up and all that and support uh, uh, the people there. And we were kind of apprehensive. We, we went to... Tel Aviv and we stayed there we'd been there before speaking, speaking to, when we walked into the hotel it was Scott who writes for more than eight minutes as well a uh, contributor and uh, we it used to be he hasn't, but there hasn't been in a way days so we haven't heard from well, him well that's the thing no now but we were, and, and immediately we were talking to the people at reception and they says oh are you over for oh, Christ will we say it we went yeah we're over for the Celtic game there's Reba travelling down later um, oh, all right, ah, he's done a, a great conversation. Got his brother out and we sat and spoke about it. Absolutely amazing. This was us just arrived and this was in Tel Aviv. And the guy was as nice as night. And he was talking about it. He's got oh, right wing government and all that. And I'm anti fascist and left wing. And, and this is a kind of conversation. And right away, I just felt, yeah, I have to come over and see things like this. I need to tell other people about it. But, um, we were fine, and then we went down, drove down to the uh, to Be to Beersheba, and that was a totally different atmosphere. They were they were up for us big time, and um, 
the attitude was totally different. We kind of tell we ended up in the same hotel as the Celtic team, which we didn't didn't know at the time that was happening. But that was good meeting up with the players and uh, the staff and that, and just chilling a bit. And then went to the game. We got a taxi to as near as Dammit to the, the the ground, and got told, "Well, we can't go any further. You'll need to walk." And we're like, oh, "Fuck, we're around cars and." We thought, yep, this mob are going to kill us, but they were already on the ground. The place was deserted, and it was about a 15-minute walk to the ground, so nobody was there, basically. We were all on the ground, so we get in, and obviously you know about the game and all the rest. I'll not get into that, but uh, after tense the game. match... Big celebrations. <laughs> a tense game oh, with big, big celebrations. Craig, Bra- uh, Craig, Bra- Craig Gordon saved the penalty. It was crucial. That, that night, that was a, a big one. But anyway, at the, at the game, and Bruni does a selfie at the end, and virtually everybody else went on a bus and back up to Tel Aviv. It was a laid on bus. Uh, myself, Scott, Michael, Michael Pringle, and his lovely uh, wife, Stacey, the four of us were out and going, well, we're going back to Beersheba. <sighs> Guys, cops, what? Like, no, <laughs> you, you stay here, I'll get you a taxi. So we eventually. Taxi came and all that, and we got in it and drove through the cordon. And the Shiva fans were all waiting on us, seen us in the taxi and went for us. <laughs> tried to try to get in the cab and all that, you know. We were like the driver, get your foot down, mate. <laughs> <laughs> and go, you know? and uh, so that was that. He got us back into the, the, the town, and we just thought. Don't, don't really fancy going out in the town tonight. Uh, we'd been out earlier during the day and it was fine, no problems, but just didn't fancy going out in the town that night in Beersheba. Uh, just went back to the hotel, a few beers, and then next day we went all down the coast uh, near uh, Jordan and then up to uh, Jerusalem and into the, the Arab side of it all and drove down into Bethlehem and uh, that was the 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 people there because they knew were Celtic fans and they they were unbelievable the way they came over to us and spoke about how good the the display was the Green Brigade display they didn't know it was a Green Brigade they just knew it was Celtic fans same thing in a way but um, didn't know it was a group that done it but they were so proud that somebody actually was thinking about them that's what they were saying we didn't feel alone we actually thought. There's people that do think about us or, or, or try to make an issue about our plight. And there's one wee guy who said to me, he goes, oh, what happened with the football? And I says, oh, we were shite last night. He goes, in my neighbourhood, silence. And as he was there, he's going, silence. You could hear the Celtic game on the TVs. And this was around his area. And I said, Is it, oh, was it on the TV? And he's going, just in streams and all that. I said, no, okay. He's going, oh, what a worry, what a worry. And he, they were wanting Celtic to win just because we did a wee bit, a wee bit of thing for them. And that's all we did. We flew the flags and gave them a bit of support, but it meant a world to them. It meant they weren't forgotten about. You know, and that, that oh, inside, you, you could cry, you know. Just a wee thing like that made a difference to these people. So uh, all around it, and it's, that wall they've got separate down in Bethlehem when they've got that wall separating it the two places and it's horrendous it's, it's you think after the Berlin wall going down and all that and, and, and it's unusual arguments that the Israeli state put out there it's to protect ourselves it's to do, but it's just pushing people at the ghettos and, and trying to push the, the Palestinians tighter and tighter away and and, and as we know now, they're, they're, they're going into houses and taking them over and pushing the, 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 the rightful owners out of the houses and demolishing houses. So this is what's going on there. And I say, when we went up to uh, uh, Jerusalem uh, the day after, and uh, again, I've been to Jerusalem before. I love all the history and all that. And it's debated in four quarters. And, the guide was taking us in the top way, and again, he was talking about Celtic. And when we said what we were over for, and uh, 
he was coming out with the same stuff. He's going to watch it on the TV. We were all talking about it. All our neighbours, we were all talking about it. And it's a, it's a lovely city, but they are getting forced out of that as well. And it's, it's ridiculous that the world isn't doing anything about it. It's because they're not, they really don't have any friends as such. The, the Israeli government are working on the Egyptians and all the other Arab states and who would usually always come out and support the Palestinians straight away. And they're all, they're all getting worked on big time to stop supporting the Palestinians and uh, making it worth their while not to. It's, it's a crying shame because they're just normal people, you know. They're, they're not all these Hamas terrorists as every, every media outlet portrays them. It's, it's, Cry shame, but it was it was such a trip. It was it meant the football for us is the main thing, and we we think oh that that's it. But Chris, that that came so so much above it, you know, so much above that result. Just seeing that and seeing what a wee gesture done at Celtic Park did for these people, amazing. It's just a pity, Joe, that um, the people who are charged with running our club now didn't realise that you know that was a gesture, and it would have yeah. meant it would have meant so much. And at a time where we're so far removed from the board, we are really so far removed. We're just not on the same hymn sheet at all. Mm. And like, if they just had to just you know, let's just the fans have put that up. You know, the fans that. Pay the hard end cash to, to not to get into the stadium. You know, let's just leave it. Mm. And it's it's a solidarity statement. And they go, no, yeah. take it down. And then the fact that they didn't just take it down quietly. They went out of their way to to, to tell the world that they tried to hijack the Scott Brown. He's going yeah. away, like you know. I know. They made a huge and he, he just the PR system, Joe, is just broken. Yeah, but not asking. I don't think anybody's asking the, the Celtic board to come out and think what I think and think what other people think. Or guys, but but, sh- but just show a bit of common sense and a bit of decency because they know what a lot of fans think. They know kind of what we are, our politics are. I'm not saying come out and wave the flag officially, but don't don't trample all over us, especially after what happened with the Bear Shiver thing. We had uh, uh, what's the guy who uh, used to be. Was it Pink Floyd guy had it in the back of his screen and all that? And he, he was making a point. He's going, these are football fans, and Celtic fans have done massive publicity out of that as well. And you've seen as as you said, we raised the money for the 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 fine that, that was given to us, you know. And why is that a fine that you wave a Palestinian flag? How's that a, how's that a thing that you get a fine for that? How did that manage to creep in? It's yeah, it's it, 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 it's it's more boggling, uh, but it just yeah. seems to be like, and it, it rever- if you reverse that, if we all had Israeli flags, and we waved them, there would have been no fine. No, exactly. So you know, there's there's bigger there's bigger um, there's bigger things at work here, Joe. It's just as if yeah. you know, like as I said earlier on, you know, you know, we've had these. These crowds coming out, all lives matter. When they were trying to have a go at the Black Lives Matter movement, yeah. But like now we have, like I don't hear them coming out, but all this all lives matter. I don't hear them coming out, but the Palestinian lives. So yeah. Well, I didn't think I, I I knew exactly where they were coming from anyway. But yeah. it just seems to me that you know, and it's shameful. And I suppose now because because Joe, we have um social media and we can tap into other news channels that you know like when we were growing up you, you watch the BBC news or we would have the RTE news here that would be it we now have other news channels and other news outlets sharing these stories but it, it's 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 not even a case of like taking sides it's a case of right or wrong it's wrong mm-hmm. to kill innocent children in, yeah, in any in, anywhere in the world and yeah the silence is deafening from certain quarters. Yeah. You know? I know, and, and, and as I said, it's, it's, it's not, it, it, we don't want Celtic to be <laughs> telling everybody what our political stance is, because that's mental, because the whole ground has got a different political stance. But generally, deep down, we, we, we come from 
Irish immigrants, we know what it's like to be treated differently and be not be told that you're you're scum, you're you're not you're, you're second class and all the rest. Of it. You know that that's where we come from. That's where that's where we are. And people who maybe are not for that background embrace that with Celtic. And, and if you don't like that and, and try to make it out as, as if or something different, well, you're kidding yourself. Because that's what we are as a support. That's what we are as a club. But I agree that the the the, the board aren't the ones to shout it. I'm, I'm fine with that. We can still shout it, but they shouldn't be shouting it against us because we're shouting it. It's, yeah. That's a crazy situation. 100%, 100%. And then there was, on, on Sunday... Um, in in Glasgow in Georgia Square, there was there was a solidarity um, rally for, yes. for for the Palestinian people, which was peaceful. And I saw some of the pictures, and I saw the square after it was it was quite clean, which was a little different, Joe, to what the people of Glasgow had to put up a twenty four hours earlier. And the one thing that sticks out with me, Joe, because I knew I know. You know, history history told us only a few months ago what they were going to do. But the fact that businesses that have been closed down during COVID weren't allowed to open their doors. The Celtic shop had to close. The Irish bars had to close. Italian restaurants had to close. People couldn't go into their city for a meal. Joe, this is madness. The, they, you know, this is, I, they, this is the police and the people in power's fault. Yeah, but the, the, this is what gets me about it, boys. I Celebrate all the one. That's it. The one. That's it. We can argue things about the, the football side. Not celebrate it all you want. Of course, that's what happens. But they were over at Ibrox. Why is why is it not get there? Well, of course they should. The crowd shouldn't have gathered. But you knew it was going to happen. But why then bring them into the city centre? They basically tracked them all into the city centre. That is absolutely ludicrous. They done it the first time when when they won the league the league was won, they actually escorted them from Ibrox into the centre and then do it again. That is, that is just mind-boggling. You know, during, even during the pandemic, when it wasn't a pandemic, we couldn't even get a parade going down the gallery and not even to go into the heart of the city centre, just go down to uh, the cross where basically all the Celtic pubs and where we'd all be and have a part of it, they stopped that. And you're just saying, how can they stop that? But escort them from one part of the city right into the heart of the city centre. And it's, there's a lot of arguments about uh, the police, the government, and, and, or the two of them, but this, these things are ongoing for years, and, and you take it back to how the Orange Order are, are, are allowed to march wherever they want and, and because there's been a wee bit upset that they can't do it now they say there's a thing called Protestant Lives Matter and stuff like that and you're saying it's fucking real you know it's, <laughs> it's <laughs> they're, they're getting etched away with their they think is the right to do and whatever they want and the previous Labour administrations to the SNP now to the Scottish media i scared to call them out. They're absolutely terrified to, to call them out. That's what it is. And they have to be called out, Joe, because the, the, you know, the anti-Irishness and the anti-Catholicism, we know it's there, okay? We know because I, I go over quite a lot. You know because you live there. But people to be saying to me, like, in the building I'm in here today, it, it was brought up to me today, a few people said about, and then I said, well, read into it. And then they're coming back saying, oh, I read that article you sent me. And I didn't know like, it was that bad. I'm like, well, what did you think it was? Like, you know, uh -huh. like, it, it's, and it's institutionalized. It's acceptable. It's acceptable yeah. to, to be up to the knees in Fenian blood. You know, it's acceptable to, to, you know, to show fuck the Pope. And then I don't know if it's, if it's been doctored, but then I see this, this video on Twitter of, Kamara, who's been racially abused in the group that are singing allegedly fuck the Pope. Uh -huh. And I'm going like one, who's who's leaked you know, first of all and two, like 
how stupid are people? Yeah. You know. But, I, I, but, think, but where, where that's doctored or not is uh, add in everything else that's happened over the weekend with all the sectarian um, and anti Irish and anti, you know, stuff that's been on with, with George Square, et cetera, and all the, and the fighting and damage and businesses shut. <sighs> the, the orange order have never been addressed in Scotland. Never, ever been addressed in Scotland. Uh, the, the, the numbers are dwindling. When I was younger, city centre, when on their big day, the week before they go up to Ireland, um, the numbers were unbelievable. Where I was brought up was flute bands and accordion bands all over the, the scheme. It must have been about six. I think there's two now, or one. You know, so the numbers are dwindling. Young people are looking at it and going, well, this is not for me, this is crazy. But it's taking time. But it shouldn't have to be that young people are coming through like that. Should, that's, that these people should be addressed right away. An organisation, you know, anti-Catholic organisation allowed to march and through the streets and bang their drums about it. It's, a, it's just a crazy thing. See, if I was to start tomorrow, somebody says, I'm going to start the Orbs Order and celebrate Battle of the Boyne in 1690 and all that stuff. And uh, I think it'd be a good way of doing that. Maybe even ask for some grants as well towards it and all the rest of it. I think we'll get a wee mob and we'll do it. People are going to you off your head. Can you go and be an anti-Catholic organisation and march the streets? That's basically, <laughs> they started it now, everybody got that. That's crazy. And we've moved on. We're, this is 2021. These things shouldn't happen. If it happened, we all know if it happened to any other race or or people uh, or religion, it'd be hammered, absolutely hammered. But it ain't. And, and the day I read something on Twitter, some some said all these marches and things should be banned on both sides. Both sides. I think I've seen one Hibernian walk in my life, and that was in Carfin. I've never seen. If you want to take it that the flip for the oranges is, is the Hibernian walk, I don't see big Hibernian walks mar marching down the middle of Glasgow uh, celebrating stuff and, and buying the drums in the, the prodies and all the rest of it. Ain't seen it. But th then it's added in, it's, oh, it's the uh, Republican marches. So a political view is now the, the opposite of the anti Catholic orange order movement. I, I don't get it. That's, that's, no, that is not the flip of it at all. No, oh, no. But it's like it's like um, it's like you know the the, the 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 thinking and the logic behind it is we haven't moved. We're never going to move on. You know, we are the people, and mm. and and everyone else, you know, is beneath yeah. us. And, see, and the, what the I see, really Joe. Sorry, Joe. What I seen in the videos I seen. I wasn't in Glasgow, but the videos I saw, Joe. Right, it's. You know, if I've seen some Rangers fans coming out and distance themselves from it, I have there's been people on social media, but I've seen I've seen one um, journalist and he was calling it out on, on LinkedIn, and oh. this Rangers fan got on and said, "Oh, you should be on Facebook with this and all that," and you know, I'm saying to me, I, I said to him, I says, uh, "So the, this is a business." This is for the business community who couldn't open their shops and couldn't open their pubs and couldn't open their restaurants in a city centre. A city centre. It wouldn't happen anywhere else in the world, Joe. It yeah, wouldn't have happened in London. Yeah. The, the, the thing that worries me about all that kind of side and, and that their way of thinking is the ones that worry me are the intelligent folk, guys like Donald Finlay and stuff like that, who is... A great guy in the courts and all that. You see him very intelligent and all that. And these guys, these are the ones that worry me that they still think like things like that. You know, he's very much fucked the Pope and all that. And he, he, he got caught doing uh, uh, the sectarian karaoke when he was when he was uh, with Rangers at the time. And these guys worry me. People who are quite intelligent that can see by it. You know, and... I've, I've had it through my life because uh, not so much, uh, as you know, I'm, 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 I'm an atheist, but I was brought up Catholic and then when I, I decided that was what I wanted to be was an atheist, that's, that's it. 
but I've had it all my life. My mother's had it all my life. And I've had it through work. I've had it through football. I've had it through association with people and all that. And it's, <laughs> people kind of think that's a myth, but it's not. You know, it's, it, it, it's happened and it still does. Yeah, and like, as I said, Joe, you know, like the, the, pub, the pubs are closed down and the first one I seen was Connolly's. And, you know, two weeks previous, I see them opening back up and I see the excitement of the staff, the management, mm. the punters. You know, I see McCool's, I see, you know, the lads outside McCool's, I, I see the most side traders tavern, I see people out and I'm going, oh, I can't wait, I just can't wait because we open up on the 7th of June over here and I just yeah. can't wait because you are that little bit ahead of us and um, I did sneak over, I did sneak over um, into County Down and uh, enjoyed a few Quite points in a beer garden, so um, a border raid. <laughs> I, did, I did break it, and um, within I think I had three points, Joe, within half an hour, and uh, within a couple of hours, I had to go. I just made a big of myself, it was, and um, but I said, I know, um, I, I, I won't go back there, I'll, I'll, I'll try and hold out until um, un- until until the um the seventh it's a monday yeah. bank holiday monday and um i'm really really looking forward to that yeah. um just but we're get... still under glasgow and Morrie are still under the same restrictions everywhere else has been lifted that you can drink and eat inside and drink and drink inside but glasgow and Morrie up in the highlands they they we're, we're still in the same level so we actually can't go inside and drink in the pub we can still drink outside but not inside and when is that going to be lifted, Joe? Well, I don't know, because it was just announced at the weekend there. Because um, too many cases has happened. So um, I don't know when it's going to hopefully Hopefully they'll look at it at the end of the week. But I just think with everything that's going on at the weekend, I, I can't see the numbers going down, you know. It's, um, so it might be a couple of weeks yet. So you you mean the, the spread of COVID by bottling your fellow Celtic or uh, your fellow football fans, you know, beating right. them up? Yeah, um, like you know, you know, you know, it we stand, but if there's no one to fight with, we battle each other. The battle of COVID <laughs> Square at the weekend, yeah. <laughs> like, and, uh, and, and I know a lot of it, John, like the, the antics of them is just like, like if you've no one to fight with. You know, fight with you. I say the people of Manchester were delighted it wasn't in Manchester again, you know. Uh, it's like, it's like I, I get it. We, we're not saints and all that. We've got people in our support as well. But when we win, we all head back for the ground. And, and we head for certain areas or people go back to where they come from and the back to their, their schemes or whatever. We head into McCool's in that area and everybody splits up. But we're all celebrating. We're not out looking for anybody. We don't go in mass and, and march together and go, let's go right into the city centre and we know the pubs are down there and know they are just close. We all want to go and be with our friends, with the people we know and people we, we share our company with and pubs and bars and, and go to your favourite bars and talk about it and just have a right good night. And I, there, there, are, there is a bit of trouble. There's always a bit of trouble in city centres, but it's not purposely generated by making it happen and by taking them all into the city centre which was done there, that, that was unbelievable nonsense. Yeah, you know, if, if you, like, the old song, like, if you cannot bait right rovers, they just bait each other up, don't they? They just, <laughs> they, just they just bait each other up, like, you know. Uh, um, what else have I got, Joe, here? Yeah, we were talking about pubs, right? so you're going to, have you been down to McCool's for a, a beer garden point? I've not had the beer can paint. I've, I've been down seeing Nicky a couple of times and uh, just having a chat during the day just to see how things are going and stuff. Um, I, I'm not, unless the weather's absolutely brilliant, I'll sit outside and have a drink. But when I was underage drinking, I wouldn't go out in that weather for a beer. <laughs> the Glasgow <laughs> yeah. summer. I know. I said that to my mate the other day. I said, you're off your head. Fucking pissing rain. You're, you're curried underneath a wee umbrella thing and the wind's blowing a gale. I says, I, I didn't even do that when I was 15. Oh, I'm going to do it, Joe. I don't care if it's snowing. 
And I was like, oh, at that age, I'm, like, I'm not going to do that. And certainly not, still not going to do it just now, but I can wait and I want to. I want to enjoy my mate's company when I do go out and have a beer. I want to enjoy the beer. I want to be, I want to see the staff and, and interact with the staff and have that whole, the whole feeling that we miss about being in pubs. It's a wee community, isn't it? You know, it's... And I see the, I see the Arbolera on social media again now. They're getting the place ready. That's another one of your haunts, Joe. Yeah, well, they, they were they were meant to be opening this Thursday. Uh, they, they, they had, oh, cause that, that was the... Today was meant to be an official day, but they were they were opening Thursday for it, and sadly, Dave and I had to cancel it because obviously you can't drink outside. You know, you can't have a, a beer inside with your foot. So he's had to knock on the head, and I think I think that's going to be two weeks or something. But it's it's difficult for people like that. You know, great boozers, great people, and are in it, and it's 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 a hard slog, but. Yeah, I know. I know when when we're um, allowed to travel, um, you know, they're telling us in this. It's telling us. I see the the Thomas was out today saying that you know it's going to be August at the earliest. Yeah. Um, so, but once once I can get the as I said, I'm going to have me me vaccine and hopefully both of them within the next four weeks. But once I get back, Joe, um, you better you better book a bit of time off work because I'm coming, I'm going to Brazen Head, I'm going to the Alto Hotel, I'm going to the Admiral, I'm going to my girls, I'm going to Traders, I'm going, I am, I'm going to do, you know, like, what did they do that, this is the 12 pubs of Christmas they do, you know? I'm oh, going, yeah. I'm going to be doing the 24 pubs of Glasgow. I know, mate. I'll, fly, I'll I... fly in on the first flight, flight in the morning, and I'll fly out on the last flight the next day. I don't I care if there's a football game on or not. I just want to get... I just want to go on, like, you take it for granted, Joe, you know, match day, yeah, go to game, go for a few points here and go for a few points there and I'll meet you there. You know, it's, it's, like, it's like alien now to me because it's been that long. I'm just so looking forward to match day, going to my kills, meet my, the mates. We all got the game together, Nicky, Paul, Ian and I, up the game together, come back in after the game, talk about it, a few beers and then go, but we're better head now because we've got a gig that night. Football mates, pub, gig, all in one day. Brilliant. You know, we took it for granted. It was so good. We'd done it so often. It was just... And, and next thing you know, it's half two in the morning and you've had a great day out and you're thinking about going home. You know, that, that is just a brilliant day out. Absolutely brilliant you day out. Wake up the next morning. Well, you're a vegetarian, but I'd wake up the next morning in a hotel in Glasgow with a kebab on the pillow beside me. <laughs> Yeah, falafel, you've right, vegetarian. <laughs> Joe, uh, like, just back to Celtic uh, before we, we wrap up. Uh, Scott Brown's gone, great servant, um, but he's gone on to new pastures. But we've still, we've still, as, as we record, we've still no manager. It's, I, I feel for Scott Brown, I mean, he's been a great, great captain, great player for us, and, all, and he's, you're thinking into this last season going for care, everything that's happening I'm not saying it's the same but he's had his, poor, his poorest season with us ever um, it's, uh, that, that's quite sad uh, he's just he's just not been not been in the races at all I thought at the beginning of the season or, well not beginning but at least a couple of months into it I thought he might grab a team on the park and pull it together a wee bit I just I just never seen it from him Um no, and I thought oh, maybe it will come later, you know. Just this all season, I think he's been very poor. Uh, you don't see it's you don't. It's like we're watching it on the TV, so you're not seeing the whole game. So you don't. The camera's not following him. You see how he's trying to pull the team together. So uh, the camera's following the ball. So it's hard to judge what he was doing when he's not in possession and 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 try to pull the team together. So I don't know about that. But I just felt he had a terrible season. His worst season ever for us. And uh, that's a bloody shame going out like that. Yeah. But what a, what a servant. And that, it doesn't take away anything else. But I would rather see him get out in a high, you know. And it's, it's quite sad seeing him get out in a low, you know. Yeah. But everything he's, and, and also the stuff he's put up with. You know, he's put up with a hell of a lot of grief. And um, just kind of... Come back to me the day about just talk about eyebrows and stuff like that. When 
we went to Ibrox and some of the abuse he got there, even just going into the ground. Uh, this was this was when COVID was on, and was the cops and he was getting shouted and abused that, and he's put up with a hell of a lot, and uh, he's he's been a great servant for us. And uh, I say just poor that he's went out this season, really poor. Yeah, and and. Joe, um, not only have you no manager here, but he's going to need, I've said it before, he's going to need a magic wand because the Champions League is going to be very, very tough to get to get through either ends because you're up against champions of countries. Yeah. Who, yeah. You know, and uh, like I'd say, well, possibly the worst team who, who have come through the non-champions route to be in the qualifiers yeah. because confidence is low. You know, nothing, as you say, like the other day it was like a, a walking game of football. Yeah. There's well, no, no beat in the, there's no, there's yeah, no usually, nothing upbeat. Even when we've got not bad, a not bad squad and a Celtic squad, we still got these games really poor, these qualifying games. And that's with a kind of Celtic squad and a kind of nucleus. Out of that team, and it played on uh, the weekend, their start there against Hibs. Look at low knees. We've got players that are certainly going to be there next season. And then when you count all them, you're kind of, kind of talking maybe about six, eight players, and you're going, well, who do we keep out the squad? It's easier to actually count the players that we're going to maybe keep or want to keep. So whoever who comes in, whoever, we're still waiting. Um, it's quite an unbelievable job. It might make a couple of signings. You're kind of hoping that it is, it is how they are got them. And he's looked at it and he's made his decisions and he's he said to the new CEO, this is the way I want to go, this is what I want to do, blah, blah, blah. Any other business or any right-minded fan would think that's what's happening. But it is Celtic, so we don't even know if that is happening. And that is quite frightening that we're going into next season uh, kind of so blank. Um, it's... I just kind of think it's going to be a massive rebuild. And yeah, and, 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 and Joe, even domestically, you know, the winners next year go automatically into the Champions League. Yeah. And I, yeah. I think that, that's a huge, that like, like, that's where, you know, you know, if the board, you know, if, um, we've kind of been guilty, Joe, as, 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 well, the people running the club have kind of been guilty of, well, let's just wait and see if, if, if we qualify for the Champions League and then we'll buy a player. Yeah, best and to qualify, and if we don't get in, we'll sell one of our best players anyway. But they don't have the assets. To, like maybe Aya might get a few quid from Eddie. They might get a few quid, from, but they won't get like they won't get the money that I think they would have maybe got last year. And I, and I, like you know like when they cashed in on Tierney, like that was like that that kept them them belly. So the, it, it looks like Eddie's away anyway. He, he didn't look too interested anyway. So they'll probably cash in on him. But you look through what the squad does. There's no one going to be queuing up to buy a lot of the others. Yeah. You know? No, I can't. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Uh, the guys will get a move if they want to move. You know, the, there was plenty of want to move at the start of the season. And uh, if guys want to move, they shouldn't be there. Simple as that. It's, yeah. it's, on, it's on the player's mind, even if. He does say, oh, I'll stay on then. It's still in their mind that they don't want to be there. Um, but the, I think they're even going into domestically next season. Teams will have a go at us because they know how vulnerable we'll be. They know we're uh, trying to build something. And that, that's when you attack, you know, so you have a go. Teams aren't scared of Celtic. Um, don't really want teams to be scared of Celtic, but I want them to worry when they play and think, oh, this team's better than us, we need to do stuff. But they, they, they always think they've got a chance against us now. That's a worrying thing that we need to try and uh, get over. You know? and I think as well, obviously if fans were at the game, I think I don't think they, a lot of these performances would have been allowed. Uh, they would have certainly known about it. Then, they maybe have bucked up their ideas and obviously the board wouldn't have got away with it because we'd been out with the pitchforks outside the, the, the main stand having a go at them as well uh, with the goings on the last season. So I think probably Celtic will be... If they, if they don't have it in order, what I said about a plan and, and it's the, the plan's been taken part just now in previous weeks, if they don't have that in mind, they'll, they'll be screaming for fans not to get into the ground because we'll, we'll go crazy. Mm-hmm. 
We really will, because cause they're unaccountable just now, because they can't, they can't really do anything other than shout about it, but we're not shouting directly at them. They're not facing it. Yeah, no, it's, it, look, Joe, it's, it's, I, I wrote this week, you know, the null and void season, because <laughs> it, was, it was Peter Hooten was on, on Soccer AM, and he was going, oh, it's a null and void season, it doesn't matter, because there's no fans there, you know, and it, yeah. he was just making light hard of, of how, how bad Liverpool had been, um, his team, but, look, we've been over this ground many times, every time we chat. Uh, it was great to have you on again, Joe. And hopefully, um, the next time you come on, we have a manager and we have a plan. I know. To and talk about it because, like, it's amazing, Joe. Like a week ago, um, there wasn't like there wasn't a lot to talk about because we we hadn't, you know. And then within a week, and it's all stuff that's happened after football field. You know the madness, yeah. the madness that's happening in the world. You know in Palestine and. The, the, the madness we wit, we witnessed Saturday evening in, in, in a in a cosmopolitan city centre, where yeah. hugs were allowed to take it over and businesses weren't allowed open. You know, it's 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 been mental, and but yet there was plenty to talk about. So hopefully, Joe, we'll have you on um, before next season starts. And I think we're going to take some. We're going to keep going. I think with bits and pieces until. Um, Probably June till the pub's up, and then yeah. then it's going to take some time oh, he, out, well, and hopefully come back for pre-season. Here's hope. Here's hope we can get it a lot more light-hearted than it was today. It was a bit. Yeah, it was, it was. It was. It was a bit of it, but that's just the way the conversation went. Sometimes it has to be. You know, that's the way we go anyway. If we're standing in a pub, that's what we're talking about. So yeah, uh, and you the maybe now the next few hours if we were in a boozer, we'd be talking about music. And, having a wee dance and carry on and all that, but there are serious things just now and it's, uh, they have to be discussed and they have to be addressed. And to people who maybe think, oh, Celtic, uh, I, don't, I don't want Celtic to be involved in any politics or whatever, I get that, I totally get that, it's up to yourself. But you need to remember some people do see it as a, a voice and where we come from, it's always kind of been a voice and representing who we are. Yeah, of course, Joe. Of course, and hopefully the next time, Joe, we're talking. I see, I see. There's a festival coming off in Glasgow, and uh, actually, Paul Malloy got a DJ gig, and um, the Acid Ultras, Nick and the boys, have a gig at. So you know, maybe we might be sneaking in the back door, Joe, in August or September when that happens. Don't really like doing that. Anything to sneak in. Oh, the guest <laughs> list. I love the guest list. <laughs> Joe, thanks very much. You've been a it's been great talking to you during the season, both on this and on the podcast and on um, just privately. So uh, I look forward to getting a point with you soon. Yeah, and love to your beautiful wife. Uh, thank you very you much. Know, you know why. Yeah, yeah thank <laughs> you, Joe. And um, I like to say, same to your beautiful wife, Jackie. <laughs>